Cool. Uh, welcome to the latest of our, of our Zoom calls. Um, as you can possibly see on the screen, um, we have some quite famous people. Um, Daryl, the Golden Voice, Williams, and uh, Seamus and Teresa Cahill. Um, and I don't mind confessing, it, having sort of uh, Daryl being on the same screen as Daryl, it's, it's, a, it's a bit like being a, a pub singer when Pavarotti turns up. It's, uh, <laughs> hardly, <laughs> Floyd, hardly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's kind of to get things up and running. What I thought I would do, I just, I didn't mention this to you. I just thought I'd put, pull a bit of a low stroke here. Um, I went to see if I could find any old pictures of both of you. And I have a um, nice one here of Seamus. And uh, if we can get this, oh, hold on a second. That's not the one I was looking for. Let me see if I can just do this separately. Here we go. And we do a share screen. And there. Now that will take you back a little bit, I think. That's a few years ago. I, it's, it, it's, it's so long ago, Nashi was even producing his photographs slightly differently then. There's a uh, cat for trainer, 15th of June, 1997. Yeah, well, I uh, just yeah. uh, taken over, uh, taken over the license like cat for that time. So yeah, that obviously that, that, that was the young lad that uh, Teresa had her eye on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just in case uh, Daryl feels that uh, he's got away with it, I don't feel left out if that's what you're about to ask. No, oh, no, no, you, <laughs> as well. you, you will be joining in. And right. uh, we then have this one. And what's worrying about this one oh. is this is 2001, and I don't think you've changed. I've probably still got the suit and tie. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not. Uh, I, think, I think I'll go back to 2001, if that's OK. We'll change the hair slightly, but um, yeah. Hello there with um, Pat and Lenny, looking, uh, looking as though you're having a great time. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. So um, anyway, one of the th uh, subjects I uh, when we were chatting before beforehand, um, only one place to start, really, and that's the uh, sort of 2020 COVID year. And I was going to ask uh, Seamus and, and Teresa, how has it affected you um, on a grander scale? Obviously, the day-to-day -day routine and everything has all been messed up. I mean, are you, how are you doing for dogs, owners? Has it, has it decimated the kennel or are you pretty much as you were? Um, yeah, after me, it's been a challenge here for these boys and whatever with COVID, whatever. But as far as our business is concerned, it didn't affect it too much. Our owners were pretty steady and that you know, every year, apart from pandemic or anything, we be losing gain owners, and this year was more or less the same. We have as many owners presently as we had at the start of the year, if not even a couple of extra. We are in a healthy position as far as dog number down and owners, I'd say that we Through the years, we always had a very loyal bunch of owners Including Darren. Going back to And, um, you know, it, it and uh, Carl have been, you know, Carl Edwards have been very good to us through the year and that. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, we're quite happy and that uh, with the situation as it is minute under the circumstances. And, uh, well, I, I checked the book before we came on air and we've had 64 dogs in since the end of March. Yeah. Right, we have two, two litters of pups of our own, but we've still had 64 dogs in the game. Yeah. Well, that, that, that can't be bad because obviously it must have been a concern. Uh, expenses, no prize money, but as you say, um, Labrooks... It, it, it was always a slight worry through the year because you didn't know from one month to another what was going to really happen you know, the inevitable complete lockdown of what, and, you know, that situation while it went on was a, a bit of a worry, but everybody was very good. The owners were absolutely brilliant in that, and as I said, Carl Ledbrooks were very good to us in that. And, uh, so when we, while we're racing behind closed doors, it's the ease of making sure that we can 
the vibe and that you own up as well that there's prize money and that and that's the main thing that there's a financial turnover and that and everybody is getting a bit yes of course that's that's that that can only be good news well um i when i was thinking about uh, about what we're going to be talking about today and, and i i had a bit of a cast my mind back and um and I thought, was this year, this year or last? And I'm about to show you the picture. And um, that was this year, apparently. That was, yes. In, Seems incredible, doesn't it? It was so this year, yeah. It was a brilliant day. Won the course in Derby at uh, Clamwell, which is highlight of any, any course of man streams, really. So, yeah, it was a some of our friends, their owners' friends, and that over the last number of years, and that it was a, a brilliant day for them. There's three boys there from London, and four of them from London there, and that you know we can imagine how good of a day it was for them. Yes, it is. It is one of the things that kind of occurred to me when when I um, said that I'd like to sort of do a do a Zoom with you, and I thought, well, what what do I really think of with, with the Cahill kennel? And you've always <laughs> have a very solid bunch of owners, uh, personal yeah. owners. Oh. And, um, you have to get ready, you have sugar. Uh, looking back to, um, I guess, the, the, the highlight for, for Daryl would have been um, an, uh, the unusual position, uh, of course, of having a Derby finalist and uh, getting beat with the other one. Um, and I think I had a I had a sort source this picture out, which uh, if we can if I can show it, um, it just reminded me of of kind of a of a of a pretty special day. Um, let's have a look. Let's see if we can see this. Hopefully you can you can see that here. Has that appeared? Yeah. It has. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I remember that lunch, lunch quite clearly. Was that three, three and a half years ago now, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Daryl, when you, when you look back, obviously it would have been, it, it has to have been a. Um, sorry, for, I'm, I'm 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 babbling here. We're relating to talk about Droopy's Acrobat uh, when he reached the final, the 2017 final, at uh, at Toaster. And then, uh, of course, the kennel, the same kennel, won the race um, with the Stute Missile. Um, what are your memories of, of that whole experience, that whole lead up to the final and, and the final itself? I mean, how, how, how do you, what's the first thing that, that springs to mind? I think the first thing that springs to mind, Floyd, is the fact that um, I was so lucky to be able to get involved because... Um, Seamus and Theresa were advertising, uh, I think, shares in the Greyhound. I, I didn't become aware of that until probably two weeks after that advertisement went out. And I, I literally dropped everything, got on the phone to Theresa and said, I'm probably too late. I'm sure all the shares are gone, but, you know, I am interested. And being the wonderful person or people that they are, uh, they both had a share each and they very, very kindly. And I'll be forever indebted to them for this. Let me take one of their shares, um, which obviously they didn't have to do I, I wasn't expecting that I was expecting to be told you know you've missed the boat you're a bit too late and um you, you know just a, just a wonderful experience but one that went just just so so quickly I think as well and um you know just thinking back to the whole occasion I remember the semi-final in particular having got there you know having gone through it was all on sky wasn't it, if you remember you know there was me bouncing around like a crazy man I think after the quarter-final win and going to the semi-finals and thinking look, this has been a great ride. If we get knocked out now, I'll be very happy. And then all of a sudden, just as the dogs were going into the boxes, changing my stance and thinking, <laughs> no, we, we've got to qualify now. We've really got to qualify. And that week, I mean, you've just shown the lunch. We then had the, uh, the final, of course, in the marquee, which was absolutely brilliant. We had um, sort of private viewing for owners that um, Derby final, if you remember, because obviously everybody else was further back at Toaster. And um, yeah, just, just the most incredible memorable experience uh you, you just can't beat it yes okay um you know we weren't fortunate enough to own the winner Seamus and Teresa were lucky enough to have uh, the winner in the kennel as well but but just to be a part of that experience absolutely massive and you know it's just something that mon money can't buy yeah I mean obviously as an owner um 
I'm interested I, I'm, with a lot of these Zoom calls. I'm trying to get owners in if if, if I can. Generally, they would have a, a slightly sh um, na more narrow spectrum than the trainers in terms of things to talk about. But I mean, you've obviously been around the, the industry a long time. Did I see somewhere 25 years this year that you were celebrating? Was, is that is that old news? Ce celebrating you as a, as a reporter stroke? Oh no, it's it's, it's longer than that. Ni 1988. So what what is that? That's yeah. that's 30. Two, two years, isn't it? Um, so yeah. I've been doing this since I was very, very young. Um, Fun enough, I was looking back earlier in terms of owning greyhounds. <laughs> the first greyhound that we ever owned was at Catford. Uh, wasn't unfortunately trained by Seamus. I didn't know Seamus and Trees particularly that well at that stage. But uh, we we had a greyhound who, who was a very low uh, low grade. In fact, um, I, just looking back and checking this morning, she had to drop to S8 bottom grade at Catford in order to win a race. And, and I can can remember that win. I can remember we used to go and watch her. Often on a Tuesday afternoon, she often ran around five o'clock after um, my wife finished work and the kids finished school. And we'd go down to the track, which wasn't far from where we live. And I always remember when she won for the first time. It had taken ages to win an S8. And that's not quite as good as having a dog in the Derby final. But, you know, you appreciate when you have a greyhound at that level, uh, just what it means to, 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 to win a race. So that, that was how we first got involved. And I think, um, you know, I've pretty much had a share at least in greyhounds uh, ever, ever since. Yeah. If uh, I'm quite aware of, of your, 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 your interest in horse racing, or well, certainly it's part of your job in horse racing, and um, I was thinking about an owner's experience. Obviously, you're not a, a, um, a racing owner, a horse race owner, but do you do you see anything in horse racing that that you would look at greyhound racing and go, you know, there's a couple of penalty kicks here. Why aren't we taking them? You, you would imagine, wouldn't you, um, that that owners in horse racing you'd almost think that owners in horse racing are probably treated a lot better than greyhound owners but funnily enough when i speak to people and i haven't had that that fortune to to, to own a horse i mean it, it, you know obviously it's easy to get involved with a very very minute share that's something that doesn't appeal to me i, I actually like the way that seamus and Teresa do it in terms of uh, they they divide their, their their good dogs up into into quarters and you, you you feel then you you know you seriously have got a leg you have got an involvement which is how i'm involved at the moment with uh, with, with both of them. But funnily enough, you do hear things from owners in horse racing. You know, it's not all rosy there as well. I think, you know, the, the, the big wealthy owners, they're, they're given a lot of respect. They're given all the right treatment. But a lot of people you speak to who do own horses do put the point across that, that you know, they're, they're seen as being, you know, not that important. So we, we, we shouldn't forget it's, it's not just in greyhound racing where sometimes we want a little bit more respect and uh, a little bit more acknowledgement of, of, of our position. I think it's the same in horse racing to a degree as well. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, of course, at, at Hove, um, they do have a reputation, or, or the corals in general. But somebody said to me the, um, just this week that, um, is it true that the, that the owner's bar at Hove is going to be converted, going to be changed? Is that any truth to that, or is it just... Well, I didn't hear anything about it at the moment, but uh, yeah, it was a new initiative that early on this year, and it was... Uh, I think it's very well received by the owners and that, and I think it would have been a real success and if our family did that and, uh, you know, we don't know how long this is going to last and how long before uh, the stadium are looking at full houses again, that's probably quite a way down the line mm. and that's so maybe they might have something in mind during this mm. period of small crowds or whatever, or maybe no, no people at all in. So I don't know anything about it, but I know it was very well received by all of them. That, and uh, I'd say it was a very well addition to uh, some of the new things they have done there and that. And I would say the management were working very well there up to pandemic time that there was Quite a few new things. The new racing manager certainly. We have six times five graded racing now. We have some horror schooling at the moment, looking to maybe have horror races in the new year. Uh, the 500 uh, metre distance seems to be very acceptable across the board, and that. And uh, I'd say the track overall is, you know, I think it, it is a shame that the pandemic again upset them kind of plans and upset what seemed a very forward step by the track, I thought, really, and that, and uh, 
you know, we are looking forward to when maybe better days down the line and that we get back to full houses and that. Yeah, but do, are you sure you're a proper trainer? Because you're supposed to be moaning, it's what trainers do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I appreciate what I have really and that I was very lucky really in the sense that, you know, I hear people here when owners not getting a fair deal and trainers not getting a fair deal. Well, when I would borrow for jobs in Ireland, the owner didn't get anything on his prize money, which was very little at that time. Be it Shelburne and Park or whatever track it was in Ireland, and that they paid their bills. But against that, uh, probably 80% of the dogs were owner trained and that. So, but uh, there was no, you, you just, you went racing, you paid to go in racing and that, and you totally enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, well, from 25 years that I've been here, I think the owners, trainers and that, have got a pretty fair deal and that, and, uh, um, you know, I, it's, it can maybe be better spread across the board maybe and that, but I think overall they haven't had a bad deal. Now, again, the only thing I would say to that is, I guess it depends where you are. Um, you know, you yeah, I suppose some of the tracks, yeah. I actually see some tracks at the minute and the, the prize money is paltry, really, you know, but, you know, down the line, are them tracks entitled to survive or are they, uh, you know, it's a matter of opinion, you know, I have feels a long time that maybe that you improve a certain amount and um, go Premier League if you can and uh, and first division and that, but all the tracks should be able to work up to that. The same as trainers and uh, that there should be, I always felt that um, a, the whole scene from the back in GBGB is of of overseeing the kennel, kennel and, and the, the condition of kennels and that needed a little more urgency, I felt. And I felt it was a bit to the demise of the game, really, that standards slipped at tracks and standards slipped at kennels and that, and has continued to do so, unfortunately, over the last number of years and that. And that needs to be addressed badly Again, some of the better tracks to you, like Carl Edwards and uh, William Hill in their own way, but uh, I think uh, Carl Edwards set a standard really at that tracks and that, that needs to be maintained and I certainly think things like that have to be addressed pretty immediately. Yes, uh, of course. That standards are not left deep anymore anyway. Okay. I did say, um, I asked you to have a little think about, is there anything about the industry that, uh, that in itself is one, you know, you know, obviously maintaining standards. Is there anything else that you would like to see change? Any changes in the rules? Would you change anything in the calendar, the way the calendar is run? Is there anything that would you, you think is a, is a given that we're just not doing? Yeah, well, we're discussing it before we come on line with you. And we were saying, like, you've got one premier bitches race a year why do they have to run in winter you know bitches a bit of sun on their back in the summer the oak should be moved to like the middle of the year yeah summer slot for it anyway or you know let it be six weeks before the derby or a month after the derby or something like that but it should certainly get a, a prime slot in the calendar the same as the ledger and your classics really yeah. and they should be the showpiece here again. I was I remember last year I was talking to Jimmy Wright and uh, I think Swindon had the first round at one of their bags meetings. So I think he was leaving home um, you know because he's not he's not far from, from from the Scottish border and he was I think they were leaving home at something like two o'clock in the morning. I think and that was driving at Swindon on a freezing cold but that it was it was frost on the ground. Put in yeah. a bit into a cold kennel. That's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. You know, running the Oaks, you know, second day, so race of the year, running it on a, a Monday morning, I think it was, at 
explained to that that can't talk to your thumb like that should that shouldn't happen really and, no, no. and but in fairness I think there is people trying to address that at the moment and that uh, Mr. Davy who is there for sponsor with that at late stage and that and uh, I would I would think I think these uh, faults have been exposed to this year and that yeah. and I don't know whether that, that whether Daryl's picking this up. It sounds sounds as though they've the, the been dive bomb there. The, the sound, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on, but uh, we hope I think we can we can still hear you anyway. Um, I guess on the racing side, I was talking to Mark Wallace the other day, and of course the highlight for, of, the, of the year for him was um, the TV trophy, which which was only sort of a couple of weeks ago, or three or four weeks ago. Um, and I guess for you. Uh, would it have been the uh, the the Star Sports Puppy Derby at Toaster? That would have been right up there, wouldn't it, for you? Yeah, well, with the Derby, uh, you know, with Smart Machine getting to the Derby final was definitely, uh, you know, a very high point for us in the year and that, and yeah, really just come of age and that, and uh, you know, it didn't work out in the final. So we were so thrilled to be there and the owners were so happy and they had a great they had a great journey through it really they, they travelled every night to see him run and they totally they had a totally good experience at Nottingham and that uh, certainly uh, yeah it was, a, it was a, a terrific event for us and the dog won really well in that but then to cap the year with um, Stars Sports Puppy Derby with surprising was a yeah terrific being homebred and that and he looks you know as if he could be a dog for next year that he is all the makings of being a dog that you know could go maybe right to the top yeah I, I've always said to people when, when they people who've bred that, that the fact that you've kind of seen him since he was a baby um, and he, he's been your baby uh, it definitely adds an extra layer to it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's, uh, it's, um, yeah, we bred him here at the kennels and that, and it's, uh, or, no, here's a Kemp bred him actually, and that, that litter. So uh, at 12 weeks, he went to Ireland to Liam Dunham, and then the litter, there was a litter of 12 in it all together. Nine of them went to Ireland, and uh, an owner of ours, Mike Simmons, he reared three and that and, and Hazel reared three and six went to Ireland that was it. So um, um, surprising uh, he was reared then by Liam Donovan in Ireland and uh, but they're, they're all, it's a nice litter. Uh, the, the bitches there, they're A2, A3s now and that they're raised in, in very competitive A2s in Hope and that, and life is hard enough for them. So, you know, there's not an awful lot of options as things are at the minute of going elsewhere and that. So, but um, yeah, they're uh, they're very nice litter, and yeah, it's really uh, pleasing to bred a litter like that. Yeah, I, I was thinking um, on that subject just before, and I thought um, you've uh, you haven't done too badly with British breads over the over the years. And uh, again, if I can share a screen, hopefully we've got one here. Chichenko. Chichenko. Yeah. yeah. Your first yeah. Cat One winner, yeah? Yeah, he was. Multiple uh, Cat One winners. Yeah. Cat One, Cat Two, Cat One, Race and Place Festival. Yeah. He was a. Uh, he was a dog. He had a. Uh, one Nubian fracture. Yeah, of, uh, of his hock and that, and there was great uh, work put into him. It, uh, I think it was stem cell treatment was only starting to, to new initial, I think, again at the time, and that, and he was done with that, and uh, and he really come good, and he, he was a slightly timid dog, but a terrific racer. If memory wasn't he Jimmy Canick? 
Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was English bred, yeah, Jimmy Fennig and that and was uh, Peter Reed and Les Coveney owned it and too. Uh, well Peter's still an owner with us and that and uh, um, you, you, you're, you're, you're teeing me up for this stuff because we're talking about British breads and owners and we've got this one. Jimmy Lolly. Jimmy Lolly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he was it um, he was owned by Peter as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 He comes yeah. from Ted Sofford. And uh, yeah, what a what a story he was really, you know, from uh, and uh, two there was we had owners at the time and they said they wanted a, a Romford dog. I'll call it a long story shop, but uh, yeah. They they wanted the rum for dogs, so I sold some Jimmy and that, and uh, he uh, he won and that. He's I think about twenty four, thirty odd of that, but he looked more a two bend dog even at that stage, and and uh, the owners they, they didn't think they liked him really, so they said, would I would I get him another dog or whatever, and that. So I gave him the money back anyway. Sort of Monte Peter Reed and Steve Gamblin and that. And the rare, I think his next first race for them was a five hundred pound race that he won. I forget what track it was now, but it was a five hundred pound race anyway, and that and he only went from strength to strength. Yeah. I can't remember, but I didn't he win something like thirty seven opens in a single yeah. year. Yeah, thirty seven I think in the year and that when he was going for the record consecutive wins at all and he looked really near done to do it but <laughs> didn't didn't work out on the night for whatever reason yeah and then he had the sky cameras there and that um, the sky news cameras were there and that. yeah but i mean he, and then but then beyond that 37 there were a load of well didn't he win something like 60 or 70 opens or something he had, I think. Was it really? like, uh, yeah, he's, he was a phenomenal dog, really, and, uh, you know, he, he's he's first he 10 yards, well, you know, we're a few kids. It's funny, he was timid as well. Yeah. He was a bit like the same time, wasn't he? But when they, when they went to the boxes, they didn't worry about anything. You know, if he didn't know you, he didn't, you know, he wouldn't come to you. Yeah. But yeah, they... Yeah, we were very lucky with them dogs really that came and that. And they were dogs that were acquired for not big money or anything like that. Yeah. They were, you know, dogs there. And they come from, you know, Stafton. Uh, yeah. That's cool. I guess I should ask then both of you before I let you go, because otherwise I'd, I would spoil your whole bank holiday. Um, looking ahead, Daryl, what, what's in line for 2021 for you? Oh, goodness, Pro probably um, more of the same, to be, be, be quite honest, Floyd. Um, you know, just happy to continue with with how thing, things are. Um, I, I mean, you've probably seen some of the Greyhound racing on Sky Sports over the last few weeks. I'm hoping that um, will we'll continue. I think it, it, it's a trial, but uh, it seems as though Arena are quite keen, Arc are quite keen. So we wait and see what that uh, that that holds. I, I just wanted to talk, if I can, briefly just about what one point I think you put to us um, ahead of this, which was uh, talking about tracks and um, uh, and what they do or what they don't do for owners. And yeah. the, the the topic of prize money obviously always comes up, doesn't it? Which you know we all want better prize money, etc. I'm I, I'd personally be a great advocate of. Um, uh, dispensing with the five pound per, per greyhound per rate and, and 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 seeing that put into some kind of um uh, you know competitions for graded dogs at various levels so you've got a chance to go for a, a decent prize which is i think what what most owners look for that that's that's my stance on that but yeah. I, I sometimes think we you know it, it can be very very simple there, there was a really good tweet i saw and i can't remember which trainer it was involved but this is something that tracks could do as well where where, where, where somebody was very happy the other day, they they received a calendar and, and I think it was a mug and some pens with with the sort of kennel um, livery on uh, as a little bit of a Christmas gift. And I, I think communication between 
certainly tracks and owners is almost non-existent. I mean, obviously you deal with your trainer, which is, which is right. But when I think back, you know, I can't ever remember having any communication. I'm sure this applies to other owners where, you know, you've bought a new dog and wouldn't it be great if, if the track were to send you an email or something and say, you know, welcome on board. Good luck with this Greyhound or when your dog wins its first race, congratulations. Here's, here's a video of that first race so you can enjoy it over and over again or, you know, little things like that. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money um, to, to, to make owners feel special. And I think, I think that's probably what owners want. They just want to be made to feel important. You know, we always think back to the, the, the days of, um, uh, what was it, the six packers queuing up and, you know, getting all their freebies while the owner was stood there paying full price for a, a pint of beer or a, a, a burger and chips. And, you know, in this day and age with technology, we, we, we've seen you've been a good advocate of it over the last few weeks with, with the guys um, at Swindon Kinsley, the, uh, the, the, the race cards, um, the, the virtual race cards being sent through to, to, to people. You know, why, why can't owners have a, a virtual race card sent through whenever their greyhound runs that kind of thing. You know, why can't you have a video when your dog wins? Why, why aren't we in a situation where every time a dog wins, I don't know, three races in a row, you get a little trophy or something or some acknowledgement maybe. I, I, I don't know. I'm talking post-COVID times, but, you know, owners should be in, enticed into, in, into the restaurant. If, they, if there are spaces on a, um, you know, on a Saturday or whenever it may be, a Friday night in the restaurant, you know, let the owners have it for half price or, 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 you know, at cost to yeah, get them yeah. to the track. That this this kind of thing. There's there's lots of ways you can you can keep owners sweet. And I just think we have a terrible lack of communication, certainly between tracks and owners, to to make them feel as though they're 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 even, you know, partly important. I mean, the other thing I was going to say was when you think a lot of tracks nowadays, obviously race meetings, as we know, take place in the daytime, but not everybody works in the daytime. You know, a lot of people are. Um, working at home, a lot of people, have, not everybody works nine to five. So why can't tracks organise, I don't know, an occasional, you know, afternoon at the races for owners? Come along Thursday afternoon, you know, have a nice meal with us, whether that's partially funded by the track or, or, or partially funded by the owner. Just make owners feel that they're, they're, they're really, really part of it. And I think that's, that, that, that's what hasn't and never has really happened. Yes, of course. I don't know whether um, we've lost Shams and... Teresa, they, uh, they certainly their screens disappeared. We'll, we'll, we'll check in a minute. I, I guess the um, the one thing that occurs to me um, is, in fact, it was, there was a bit of a Twitter discussion going on today, and um, with some owners um, or some somebody claiming, or uh, just bear with me one second. So uh, hopefully we're we're back in action again. Um, once again, technology has let us down. Um, as you can see, Seamus has ended up with the Golden Gate Bridge behind him. Um, <laughs> yeah, Daryl, um, you were sorry, you 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 were just concluding about about um, sort of I don't know uh, tracks connecting more with owners and and uh, making them feel a little more valued. I, I think these days, for well, it's very easy, isn't it? You you can automate a lot of things, can't you? So. You know, I'm sure if you put the idea to tracks that every time a dog runs, you get an email or you get a race car and every time a dog wins, you get an acknowledgement and they think, oh, what an awful lot of work that would be. But but it isn't, is it really? Because it's very easy to automate these things. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just I just would like to see a little bit more communication between uh, tracks and owners. And, and bear in mind that if you get that scenario where, um, you know, they are communicating a lot better, the, the idea hopefully would then encourage owners to to remain involved to take another grey hand. I mean, we, we, once we've got that, that, that base of, of owners, what we should be doing as, as tracks and probably as trainers as well is trying to therefore get other people, friends, connections, colleagues of those owners to see if they might be interested. So, you, you know, I'm not saying we should have a, a, an incentive for an owner to recommend someone else and get a, a month's free kennel bill or, or something like that. But we, we, we should be using the people that are out there who love the sport to be trying to you know, encourage or at least let other people be aware of what the sport offers. Uh, and I think we're, we're, you know, it's a little bit of a cul-de-sac sometimes, it's a bit of a dead end. It, it's, it's them it, or it's, it's us and we don't look outside of, the, of, uh, of those people currently involved too often. Yeah, the, the fact I, I reminded myself, I, I was going to say, I noticed it was a bit of a, a Twitter discussion this morning about uh, between 
one group who was saying that um, the tracks were now quite happy, um, that now trainers were basically buying their own dogs and racing them themselves. And then um, Billy Boyle spoke up and said, well, that's precisely what the trainers don't want. The, the trainers don't want to own the dogs themselves. They would much rather have owners in the kennel uh, for a variety of reasons, financially being one, but um, also it, it does it does add to, to to the whole experience, doesn't it? When you, if you if you have owners there with their enthusiasm and their excitement about getting involved, and I know Seamus has a a, a a group of owners of which you may be one that quite enjoy the bevy along along the way. Um, and again, that I think that that's terrific. Seamus, would, would you certainly would much rather have owners in the kennel than not, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Financially, first of all, anyway, because we have big overheads and that and we need we need owners and that. And uh, we have quite we have more dogs of our own now than we ever did. But uh, with bags race and we they can cover their costs and that like that. But yeah, owners, our owners are essential part of it. The social element, that's what's missing presently is as well, you know, that no owners going to the track and that. And it must be hard for trainers and that to get get new owners because that was where you kind of met people and that always my way anyway was the social element is where I sold and bought dogs and sold them and got new owners and that. And it was always pretty successful through the years. And yeah, they they are the main part of it. And Sunday morning we'd have, you know, 20 people maybe are that here at the, in the kitchen, have a cup of tea and that, and you just leave them be and have their own banter and that, and they just discuss the ups and downs of it and that, and that's all part and parcel of it, you know. But would you, would you not say, though, that a lot of that was down to you and Teresa because you're, you're so sort of open and friendly and, and encourage that kind of thing, and, and it's all very well blaming the tracks, um, but... A lot of the time, in my experience, the trainers themselves have to have things to answer for. Answer for, yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah, we would, well, as everybody probably knows, I was kind of like the bevy, as you said yourself, and I always mixed with the owners at the track and that. And we had, through the years, we had some great nights, you know, from Catford to Wimbledon to Walthamstow to Hove. And, um, you know, there was even in latter times there the last year and that we used to have a group of owners there in Hove and that and Terry Dartnell had have a group of owners there and that and there was great banter between the two sets of owners and that and, uh, you know, we tended to have them type of owners. I, I Maybe some of the other trainers didn't have... Uh, the owners that was as much socially involved in that, but yeah, it is. Um, all presentation, let it be whatever you do, presentation is so important in that. And uh, it's, you know, you look after your dogs and present them right, and you try and present yourself as reasonably good as you can in that, and uh, whatever. And, uh, you know, that's why I, I, I I feel saddened, I'd say, at times when I go to some of the stadiums and that and see how little effort has been put into, you know, make owners uh, happy and satisfied. And that it is it certainly leaves a lot to be desired. But it goes back to, I suppose, it all revolves around finance and that. And But some of these tracks... Now are getting so much money out of these contracts and that, and uh, offering this to trainers to come in and that, and they have a load of dogs on their hands. But I see very little improvement in the stadiums. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. So, one last thing from you then. Looking ahead, obviously surprising for the derby. Fingers crossed. Anything yeah, it'd be lovely, yeah. lovely to think along them lines. Yeah, we have nice. Uh, I'm. Yeah, looking forward to this year. We have, I think, some nice dogs there. Stop with we're, Romford. We're going to Romford for trials with seven or eight dogs on Wednesday, and that's going to be... One of yours, Daryl. 
Francis. Go oh, in. good to hear. Good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we had we have some nice young dogs there. The man more. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes well, and that we'll be open racing there in in February and that. And you know, basically at the minute for us, it's it's going to centre around Central Park, Romford, and Monmore. I imagine, and, and Hove, where our bread and butter, I suppose, is Hove, because I don't think we have any open racing there till April or that. So, you know, Romford Central Park, uh, and if Towster get open racing going, I'd like to be going there. Excellent. So, ladies and gentlemen, and even Seamus, you're dropping out my screen, mate. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's falling off the bridge. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, finding a few uh, a few minutes for me today. Um, really enjoyed it, and uh, fingers crossed uh, we we see each other all other on the other side. Thank you, thank you very much, Floyd. Uh, thanks very much. Guys. I'd like to wish a happy new year to all my owners and uh, friends and that around the country in Dublin. All right. <laughs> Probably does. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks very much. Bye. 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 Bye.